Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, so this is going up a bit late in the evening, but it's still Saturday where I am, so still technically Marvel Cinematic Saturday. <laughs> anyway, so today's movie, this or this weekend's movie, was Iron Man 2 uh, from, I think, 2009, I think. Uh, so... I enjoyed it. It's a good movie. Uh, the intro was really good, watching uh, Ivan build uh, his own arc reactor. Uh, it, was a, it was a good scene. And... Showed, and like, contrasting it with how Tony built his arc reactor, it's, uh, it's a pretty interesting contrast. Because, uh, uh, yeah, Ivan is just uh, a lot more methodical um, yeah then it goes to the Stark Ac Expo and you got the the sexy dancers cause sure uh, Stan Lee is Larry King with no dialogue first couple of, uh, his first couple of uh, actual MCU cameos he didn't get any dialogue is kind of weird. He actually, this is the third MCU movie in a row that he didn't get uh, any dialogue. I forget when he had, when they actually started giving him lines, but yeah, it's just kind of just me just noticing it and uh, finding it weird, or at least finding it interesting. Given you know, he'd later go on to always have uh, great lines, but anyway. Uh, Tony likes women with badges. I don't disagree with him. It is kind of sexy. Uh, we get Justin Hammer at the uh, at that hearing, and he is wonderfully smarmy. <laughs> just such a good performance uh, put in. Uh, Justin Hammer in the comics was. Uh, very, very different. Uh, he was still a rival to Tony Stark, uh, but uh, he was a lot older and a lot less smarmy. Uh, he most notably tended to outfit villains uh, for their attack uh, and send them to attack Tony Stark. Uh, he did that a lot. Um, and, uh, yeah, he was always a fairly interesting villain. Uh, and then, you know, Don Cheadle coming in as the new roadie. I do really like him in the role. Uh, he, uh, I think he does a really good job in the role. Uh, during the hearing, Tony jokes about uh, how he'd accept the, uh, or he'd, you know, consider being Secretary of Defense, which uh, is a nod to the comics. Uh, he did become Secretary of Defense for a little while in the comics. Um, during the Bush era, the Bush administration, um, they, uh, Marvel pretty much refused to actually state outright what party Tony belonged to during that, uh, during that storyline. I mean, they pretty much refused to say what uh, political party any of their characters respond to, or belong to, but it was especially funny when it was, when a story about a character being considered, or joining, yeah, about a character joining a specific political party. Uh, or political party's uh, cabinet. But, uh, whatever. And we all know Tony'd be a... I think Tony would be a Republican, honestly. He'd be all about those tax breaks. I, on the other hand, he is a very much a... Uh, an... 
uh, an imaginary billionaire because he's a billionaire who actually cares about his employees. You know, he gives, in the comics at least, you know, he pays good wages to people and takes care of them and is just generally not even a little bit what real billionaires are like. But whatever. Uh, there's famous, uh, his line about uh, privatizing world peace, you know, I've privatized, I've successfully privatized world peace. As a socialist, I don't, I don't uh, agree with that. We need to, we need to socialize world peace. I'm not actually sure how that would work. <laughs> anyway, uh, I like the, I like them listening to Should I Stay or Should I Go? Great song. I love that song. Uh, the whole scene of, uh, Tony and Pepper talking about his business and he just, and him just, uh, declaring her CEO. Uh, I like that scene. They played off each other really well. All the crosstalk between them, um, was pretty entertaining. Oh, uh, yeah, Black Widow's debut in the comics. She debuted, uh, pretty early on in the 60s as a... As a foe of Iron Man, she was a Russian, or Soviet, this is Soviet Union Day, so she was a Soviet agent uh, tasked with, you know, industrial espionage and uh, sabotage towards, uh, towards Stark. And she used, uh, you know, various means, a lot of femme fatale shit. Her outfit was very much a femme fatale thing, with, with a complete with like a black veil, half or half face veil, which mm, I don't really like that outfit. I don't really like her original costume, her vid, her original villain costume, which I think she might have worn briefly, like when she first started as a uh, first became a hero as well. But anyway, yeah, I don't like that costume. Uh, fun fact. Uh, Hawkeye's debut was actually also in an Iron Man comic when Black Widow convinced him to help her take on Iron Man. Obviously, that's not where he debuts in the movie, but yeah, so that's uh, how they met in the comics, is she manipulated him. Uh... Also, I like Pepper uh, describing Natalie as a very expensive sexual harassment lawsuit. <laughs> that's a that's a really good line. I like that line. I also like her reaction when Nat takes down Happy. Because <laughs> I mean, Nat is so quick and casual about it, and <laughs> then Pepper's like, "Oh my god." Then Monaco and Elon Musk, you friggin' Elon Musk is awful. He really is. Um, then he's an idiot's idea of a genius. It's sort of how I think of uh, of Elon Musk, because. He has so many terrible, terrible, terrible ideas. And, but, because he's rich, people think that he's brilliant. Like, he used the money that, you know, he got from his parents' South African uh, diamond mine in order to buy, in order to buy Tesla, and then he got to take credit for the electric car. It's like, dude, you didn't invent shit. You just bought a company that was inventing stuff. But Elon Musk is another topic. Suffice to say, I hate that guy. And 
And uh, I like the moment when uh, we see that reporter again from the first movie, the one Tony slept with, and Pepper says she did quite a spread on Tony last year. I like how she was very catty about it. Uh, the Grand Prix scene? What's weird about the scene is it looks so fake. Like, that whole race, like, uh, most of the shots we get of that Grand Prix look totally fake. It's not. <laughs> Those are real drivers and real cars on a real racetrack. But... Grand Prix and F1 racing as well is the same thing. It just always looks fake. At least from certain camera angles. Uh, it tends to look fake. Just because of how fast the cars are going is what it comes down to. The cars are going so fast that it doesn't even look real. Uh, and then Whiplash gets an awesome entrance. Yeah, whipping out the whips and then his, uh, his, uh, suit burning off and that's, that was badass. That was a badass moment. Uh, Whiplash is another character that, uh, debuted in the 60s. Uh, he later started going by the name Blacklash. I'm not, I don't know why. Like, I'm not sure if the reason for... The change from Whiplash to Blacklash. Uh, it just seemed completely arbitrary to me. Um, he doesn't get called either one in this movie, of course. Uh, yeah, he he just seems to have so much fun in that scene, whipping shit. Uh, the moment where like a bunch of cars crash behind him and blow up, blow up behind him. It's so stupid. Like, it just looks ridiculous. And it's so cheesy. And uh, that bit was a bad idea. I mean, those cars generally don't explode to begin with. Like, it takes a, it actually takes a lot to make one of those cars blow up. Uh, yeah, they'll catch on fire, but they don't explode. Because, uh, I know this because my mom is a huge F1 fan. Uh, I've seen bits of races with her, and I've, you know, I've seen cars crash. Um, sometimes pretty, yeah, sometimes pretty dramatically crash. And... Yeah, there, there was, yeah, you know, there might have been a little bit of fire once in a while. Occasionally, one of them would uh, catch on fire a little bit, but even that, not often, and no explosion. So yeah, that bit with um, boom right behind Ivan, no, that was just bad. Uh, I do like the uh, the suitcase armor. Uh, it's not my favorite look of his armor, but. It's a cool idea, and a nice homage to the comics where he did always keep his armor in uh, a suitcase, or a briefcase, or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, it's kind of a nice nod for that. Um, but, uh... Yeah, and then when Tony visits Ivan, that's a really good scene. Uh, I really like how... ...pleased Ivan is. You know, how quietly... Uh, ...not even threatening. Like, he's not even threatening towards Tony in that scene. And yet, <laughs> he's just, he just does a really good job sort of 
tearing Tony down a little bit. When he's taken to meet, when Ivan's taken to meet uh, Hammer, of course Justin Hammer has a big pristine white hanger, like pristine super clean floor and just super elegant uh, private plane hanger. Of course he does. Uh, I like Ivan wearing glasses, like when he's doing, like when he's typing and, uh, actually, yeah, mostly when he's typing, I think. A little bit when he's doing some of the engineering, uh, later on. But I like him wearing the glasses because he's just like this big scary dude. And then he just puts on these, you know, these little reading glasses. There's just something so amusing about it. I don't know what it is. It's just the dichotomy, I guess. Yeah, it's the dichotomy of how threatening he is and how unthreatening reading glasses are. Uh, right be at, in the scene before Tony's birthday party, it really seemed like Matt was flirting with Tony, which seemed a bit weird. I mean, as did she? Eh, did she know that uh, Tony and Pepper were interested in each other? I don't know. Uh, Tony being drunk in his armor is uh, an uncomfortable scene. Uh, Downey really sells, like, Downey really does a good job making that scene uncomfortable. And the skeet shooting is downright irresponsible. Like, he's shooting glass bottles. Like, that glass could get in somebody's eye or, you know, no, don't do that. That's just... A terrible idea. Then we've got the Tony Rhodey fight. It's a really good fight. Another one bites the dust is a really good fight song. Like it's uh It's got a really good be I mean it's a great song in general, but it really does work well for for a fight. Uh, <laughs> there's a moment where they're just punching each other, and all I could think about was Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> it's just the way that it, they're doing it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a really cool fight overall. A um, lot of fun. Uh, Coulson, Coulson gets to reappear. He doesn't get a lot, uh, of dialogue in this one, but he does get one of the best lines in the movie when he tells Tony Stark, I will tase you and watch Super Nanny while you drool into the carpet. That is just, that might, that's probably the best line in the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta say, that is the best line in the whole movie. One of the best lines I've ever heard, frankly. It's just so, so good, and he delivers it absolutely perfectly. Uh, yeah, he just, like, just the delivery, of it, this, this monotone, the straight delivery is just golden. Uh, I do like seeing Tony go into work mode. It's really cool to see him... Just get an idea in his head and get to work making it happen. Uh, showing just how showing just how good uh, an engineer he is. Yeah, you know, he's not just a genius. He's someone who does get really involved whenever he gets an idea. And it makes him 
always makes him really compelling. I think that's when he's at his most compelling, is when he is in his work mode. Um, then the Stark Expo. Hammer's got some moves. Justin Hammer's got some moves. When he comes out onto the stage and everything, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is better than I do, that's for sure. I like his moves. And then when things go to hell, Black Widow's got some moves. Specifically for kicking ass. And I like how effortless it looks. Uh, her stunt her stunt actress is phenomenal. Like she really is a, just an amazing stunt actress. And, you know, stuff like that is, honestly, the Oscars need a best stunt category. Because uh, stunt actors and actresses do not get nearly the respect they deserve. Just why it was so amazing when Brie Larson, uh, after winning some award... Uh, brought the brought her stunt doubles onto the stage with her to, you know, show her appreciation for them. I think is what was it best fight for at one of the at some fan voting award or something like that. I don't remember what it was. But yeah, like is like that was a class act on her part, bringing those stunt doubles on stage to uh, to give them their props, and they really do deserve props. And Black Widow has, like I said, one of the best stunt doubles. I like the bit where Pepper finally finds out that Tony was dying. And she's like, why didn't you tell me? I'm, I was going to make you omelets and tell you. Because, yeah, omelets are the best way to tell someone that you're dying. And then I also like Tony describing a the situation as a hemorrhoid attack. Cute play on words. And then Rhodey telling Tony, it's your it's your fault, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. But yeah, that's fair. That is totally accurate. And then there's a fun fight against the droids. And against uh, Ivan himself. And, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it's just, uh, a fun movie. Um, I felt it didn't have the same thematic weight as the first one did. Because uh, the first one was all about Tony learning how to be a decent human being. Um, this one was about him, I guess, wrestling with his mortality, I guess, um, to a certain extent. Actually, no, it was about legacy. Yeah, this, uh, this one was about legacy. But... Mm. I don't know, I didn't feel like it provided the same the same quality in terms of uh, in terms of exploring the theme. But man, that might just be me. It was still, you know, it was a interesting theme and they did explore it in some pretty interesting ways. Um, you know, the way that both good and bad gets passed along to, uh, to the future generations. You know, Ivan inherited his father's 
anger and hatred. The legacy of Howard and Howard and Anton carrying on to their children. And then, uh, speaking of which, um, Anton in the comics was uh, another Soviet villain. He was the Crimson Dynamo, which is just a, uh, yeah, dude in a suit of armor who fought Iron Man pretty regularly. Um, Tony fought a lot of Soviets in the 60s. That's pretty much what he was dedicated to, was fighting Soviets. Later on that he started uh, dealing with more... You know, with threats that were more capitalist in nature. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. You know, not one of my, not one of the best Marvel movies, not one of the worst. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty solid. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say about it. Uh, so, next Saturday, Captain America. Or no, I think it's Thor next. Captain America or Thor? I forget. Whichever one it is, you know, it's next. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a nice night.